we're going to do an example um, from the book. I'm going to show you how the book would do it. And then I'm going to show you uh, how to do it using a timeline. Uh, and I think you'll find, at least I find, the timeline is just far easier to construct a problem on than it is to, you know, to do it uh, the way it's shown in the book. But let's show you the way it's uh, shown in the book. So here is our setup. We can buy some equipment, which is $60,000. Uh, for the project we're undertaking, we would need an increase in working capital of $100,000. The equipment requires uh, a cash outflow uh, in four years of $5,000. And in five years, um, you can sell that equipment uh, for $10,000. And here's the, this is, these are all of the outflows, and here are all of our inflows. And now, it's not in a form that we can use it, mind you. We have sales revenue of 200000 cost of goods sold of one twenty-five, and out-of-pocket operating costs of thirty-five. So we wouldn't model all those cash flows. You wouldn't say, well, sales revenue is a positive cash flow, cost of goods sold is a negative cash flow, out-of-pocket operating is a negative cash flow. We would really just look for the net cash flow on this. We'd only model the net cash flow. And it's easy to see that our revenues are 200000 our total costs are one sixty, So it's going to provide $40,000 a year. So let's have a look at how the, how the uh, book models it. And here we see at the top of the uh, solution uh, that they provide that they uh, come to the same $40,000 that I just discussed. Now, let's look at their cash flows. And they'll group it into the three categories of cash flows for outflows and inflows that we've already talked about. The first one is our cash inflow, purchase of equipment, oh, sorry, our cash outflow, the purchase of equipment and the working capital needed. These two represent cash outflows. This is our initial cash outflow. Look at the present value of them. Because they're happening now, they're both equal to the amount of the cash flow. There's the overhaul of the equipment at the end of year four for $5,000. The net present value of that is 2,960. And we don't, uh, uh, we have no other cash flows, no other cash outflows at that point in time. Then we go to the cash inflows. Here's our, our net, net cash inflows from sales. There's the 40,000 that we calculated. So this would be our increase in revenues or decrease in costs. There's 40,000. The second type of cash inflow uh, that we get is salvage value of any equipment. There's our $10,000. Net present value is $51.94. And the third type of cash flow we get is any release of working capital. Notice up here, if 100 went in, 100 comes out. Net present value is $51.97. Now, this is why we do not compare them directly. We can't say, hang on, on an incremental cost basis, 100 in, 100 out, shouldn't we just ignore it? No, because the 100 going in has a net present value of 100. The 100 coming out only has a net present value of 51,937. Those two costs are not identical. They're different because of time. And you notice that when we take the full difference between the two, we get a net present value of 31,494. Is that greater than zero? Yes, it is. Then we should go ahead and do it. So let me show you now how to do that with a timeline. So here is our timeline. And as we read the question, we know that we have a five-year project. So there's our five years. And what are we told? We're told that we have to spend $60,000 on the equipment today. We also have to spend another $100,000 on an increase of working capital. In exchange for that, we're going to receive $40,000 in net cash flow in each of the following five years. We're also told that at the end of the fourth year, we have to spend $5,000 on reconditioning the, uh, um, the, the, the machine. We're told that we're going to get $10,000 at the end of the project for salvage value and the release of working capital of $100,000. So we're all set with our cash flows. That is what our cash flows look like on a timeline. Our required rate of return in the question we were told was 14%. So how do we solve this? Well, we want to take the net, the, the present value of our inflows minus the present value of our outflows. So let's, uh, let's see if we can't solve this in Excel. It would be equals the net present value 
uh, function. The first entry is 0.14. Now remember with uh, Excel, you're looking at the end of the first year. What's the end of the first year? 40,000. The end of the second year, 40,000. End of the third year, same thing, 40,000. End of the fourth year, it's 40,000 in, 5,000 out. So we just have to put 35,000. It's net positive of 35. And end of the final year is 40,000 plus 10,000 plus 100,000. So we can model that as 150,000. That's the net present value of our inflows. What's the net present value of our outflows? 60 and 100, but that's time zero. So it's just minus 160,000. And there we go. Actually, I, you should take that comma out. Sorry about that, because this is Excel. In Excel, you're not going to put commas in. Let's continue on the fact that we're on Excel. So minus 160. And if you hit enter after you do that, you will get 31,494. Excel will automatically format the cell for you in terms of dollars. You'll get 31,494. So the way I like to approach this is as I read the question, I make my timeline. And then I start putting in the numbers where the question says. So I would have read it, well, it would have cost 60000 a day, an increase of, of 100000 The end of year four, we have to spend 5000 My cash flows go on top, my salvage value, my release of working capital. And then I'm ready to put it into an Excel format. I take everything here and I put it on the end, minus that. And then everything else can be modeled inside the net present value function for Excel. Easy peasy.